Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, it's, it's great to have you on board as always. And uh, as always, I am grateful and thankful that you're here to join me in this somebody's evening, somebody's afternoon. For me here, it's, I guess, early evening, evening around 6 o'clock. Uh, you never know who's watching around the world. So I guess start saying hello instead of good evening. Uh, boy, just that was a prolonged entrance, wasn't it, to this? Tonight, we're going to briefly talk about the dangers of being a payroll pastor or a pastor on the payroll or a paid pastor. Um, I want to make something simple. It's, it's, it's hard to get into deep conversations with folks and or even quick by because people get all mad and say, well, how are you going to pay for this? How are you going to do this? Uh, well, and we get a lot of people get some sort of, I don't know why, but they get some sort of anxiety over their pastor being paid. And I'm always confused. Now, this conversation is not about whether there should be or should not be pastors or should be buildings or not buildings. That's not this conversation. And that's another complete conversation we can have another point in time. Um, you know my feelings on that. I've talked about that in the past. But I'm talking about those who have pastors or even those who may follow preachers. Um, the dangers. Well, first, we're going to read two scriptures just to start off with. And they're popular, they're very popular. And if you don't know, I might be surprised. But you've heard it a million times. So if you turn your King James Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, we've heard people say the root of uh, evil, um, the money is the root of all evil. That's for the love. The love. you got to remember that. So for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Now I'm going to go to chapter, I'm sorry, chapter. Now we're going to go to Luke chapter 16, verse 13. So Luke chapter 16, verse 13 in the King James Bible. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, mammon being money. Now, the title of this video clearly is going to be about the six dangers, or the dangers of being a paid pastor. So I, I, I might just title it the six dangers. What happens when they're paid pastors? Is there a compromise? Most likely. Tonight we're gonna to use props. It'll be fun, we'll do props. So you have this bit, Bible, okay? You have this King James Bible. And a lot of pastors, they start out, and you know, you got people coming in, you got, you know, you got a buck or two, you're like, okay, great, they'll go towards the gospel tracks, and you know, whatever, and be helpful. And so you, you, you got them pretty even here, see? See how that is? So we'll start up here, just for, for the video. So you got one. I mean, this video is going to be hard because it's hard to see it, so one dollar. I don't have a panoramic view, so one dollar. And then you get five dollars. You haven't compromised yet, but you're like, wow, the money's coming in. Now you get ten dollars. You see where this Bible's going? Now you get twenty. The Bible's almost out of view now. Fifty. Well, now we're compromising because we need we need you're like wow, fifty bucks. Fifty dollars? Are you kidding me? We're doing great. We can, we can we can get people in here. We can we can do programs and, and really start getting people in the door. We can really go after them. And I mean, we don't want to we don't want to judge them. We don't want to tell them too much about their sins because you know they've been giving money. We need to keep the church going. Here comes that one hundred dollar bill. You see, they start out. They start out like, hey. That's cool. Thank you for donating. We'll put it towards something, maybe food drives, maybe buying some clothing for people. And, and you know, the pastor's still working. That, that, that pastor's at work. But he's like, he's like, man, I got to donate. You know, but, oh, look, money. Wow, maybe we should donate more time to this uh, ministry. And really, really just get out. Maybe we get a loan on a building or something and really build the seats. Boy, people are just coming. 
Uh, they, they, you know, we got new programs. We're up to date. We got modern technology going on. We got, we got a light show. We got great audio and video. We got Facebook. We got everything. We got the YouTube channel going, Rumble. Man, this is great. We are doing awesome. We've got the state of our state of the art air conditioning system, heating system. I mean, brand new. Our seats in this church are very comfortable, incredibly comfortable. You've compromised. And don't tell me it doesn't happen because it absolutely 100% does. You see, sometimes pastors start out earnestly and they start out like they want to do well, but they get blinded by wanting to do more. But they forget what they're doing more for. They just see the money rolling in. But see, they're paid by the congregation. They make a salary. So you're not going to call people out anymore. You can't do that. One of, one, of, one of your top three donors in the building bringing a lot of money, but they're not exactly living a life of uh, godliness. Your pastor makes about forty, forty-five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. Well, maybe in different parts of the country it's different because of the um, down south here in Tennessee, so maybe they get paid a little less in different places. I'll say $30,000. Half of that comes from that one donor a year because they're well off. They, they do well for themselves. But they're living a life of sin. What do you do? Can't call them out. There goes your money. What do you do? You got this big church and one of your big donors. And, and sometimes you start with the pastor and then now you've got some associate pastors, senior pastor. You know, I... Uh, find me in the Bible where a senior pastor, associate prefer, uh, pastor, uh, if you can point it out to me in Scripture, please go ahead. I'd be more than happy to look at it. And then, or maybe you get a board of directors now. See, a lot of men start. Small little building. They just want to spread the word of God. They just want a fellowship. They want to get people together. But as the money starts rolling in, you start making decisions you shouldn't make. You start erring from the faith. And this, now don't, well, by the way, when I wave this, don't think I'm a rich man. I'm like, I had to go to the bank and get some money out and, then, you know, put this together. Somebody's going to tell me right now, wait, banks, you got a bank account? Relax. That's coming to an end shortly also. Well, banks in general, but <laughs> us having the bank. What do you do? You're not going to get them to call out people. And that's why you have sin in so many of these church buildings. And, and by the way, let's not just hold it to church buildings. Those don't even go to church buildings. And maybe they just fellowship online and they have the Bible online studies or just follow a few preachers. And I'm not saying you can't, but who calls them out? Who calls out that sin? Who helps them from sinning? You're just taking the money. A few bucks turns into a lot of bucks, and then it's everything you live on. And you live off of people. And that ain't right. I will stick to what I said a long time ago in a video. Men should work. Preachers should work for their money. How disconnected do you become when you have no idea of how life actually works in reality when people have to deal with everyday problems? How are you helpful? Now, I'm not saying I'm incredibly helpful. I'm Mr. Super Helpful Guy. Like, I got all the answers. I'm not saying that. But these are, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. There's six bills here. We'll call the six dangers of being a paid pastor. Because they rely on that money coming in. Now, now, if you work and you do not rely on that congregation to pay you, you can actually preach the Word of God. You can stay true to the Word of God. And you will never be compromised. You will never desire to compromise at all because you are not reliant on them. Now, can can they donate? Absolutely. There's a lot of things. If you're in a small little building, that's fine. Five, don't be 501c3. Please don't be 501c3. 
Avoid that, please. But, keep the lights on, somebody said to me one time. I'll never forget this, man. Um, I'm not saying he's a bad guy or anything like that, but it was probably one of the most ignorant statements I've ever heard. I'm not blaming him. It's not his fault. He's been, he's been indoctrinated to believe this way. Who's going to keep the lights on? Who's going to keep the lights on? If we, if we don't tithe and give all this money that our pastor in the building, who's going to keep the lights on? Well, how many lights do you need on? That was my answer. How many lights do you need on? How big is your building? How big do you need your building? How many lights do you need on? Comes an issue because you get all that overhead. There's one overhead you should not have, and that is the preacher. That is the pastor. That should not be an overhead cost that you should incur. That money could be well spent on, oh, I don't know, the other congregants that might be there that might be going through hard times, might be struggling, no fault of their own. No, that's not what happens, is it? I don't care what denomination you are in. I don't care if you're in a Catholic building, a Roman Catholic building, or a Protestant building, a Pentecostal building. I don't care. A Baptist building, don't care. Church of Christ, Jehovah Witness, Seventh Day, don't care. You take money, as far as I'm concerned, you're in sin. Don't give me the Old Testament stuff with, you know, back in the Old Testament they had to pay. They paid, really look deep at that, how, how being paid was actually done in those days. And remember, we're in a New Testament now. We're living New Testament. You can't just pick out what you like in the Old Testament. Pick out what you like in the New Testament. Kind of mix them together and go, okay, this works for me. But that's a different story. Pastors should work. Don't tell me Peter didn't work for his food. Don't tell me Paul didn't work for his food. Don't tell me Barnabas didn't work for his food. Don't tell me Timothy didn't work for his food. Please don't tell me that. You bring me evidence in the Bible that they did not work their food. And I don't mean evidence by 19 other authors that had nothing to do with uh, Jesus because they were never even an apostle at all. And understanding apostles, we're not all apostles. That, that time has come. Apostles, direct, you know, that's a different story. You got to learn your, kind of how that works down the line. No paid pastors. That is the dangers of being paid. Right there. Before I end the video, however, I will say. What, what about the elders? What about the elder pastors? That are, you know, 65, 70. They're retired. And they're probably living off pension. But it's our job to take care of them, isn't it? They are giving us so much food from here. Or they should be. Now, if you want to bring some food to them, it's all right. You're not being looking down on that pastor or that preacher and going, we don't think you can handle yourself. We're going to feed you. No, no. They have been, if they had been there for those congregants over the years and they're the folks that they're with, they deserve that. It's re we're required. So, that is my video. The, uh, the dangers... Of being a paid pastor, you will ultimately compromise in something. I've seen it. I've seen it with men who said they would never compromise. I've seen men compromise and say they don't compromise while compromising. God bless and have a beautiful day.